Dang, friends, family, and followers, it's your little moon here. They come and show you in the early morning on Buena Vista. This is a little grassy field here. I'm thinking about grass, natural transformation. My dog's all excited here. Pretty close to the neighbor's property. So this, all oh, this is Bracharia. This is an invasive grass. Came from over here. And we used to have a horse here and it would stand there all the time and hated Bracharia. It would eat the seeds. The sheep eat the seeds too. Cows will kind of eat the leaves, I guess, if it's all that's left. It's a very bitter grass. It'll grow pretty much anywhere. It's used for cattle and tropical areas. Mostly, I'd say. It can do this too if it's leaning against something and get six feet high. It's uh, and it just kind of keeps expanding. Now, one of the uses we found for this bracciata is plastering with the ecodome. We can do some clay plasters and fill that out with. Instead of straw, we use, we dry out this, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Now, uh, in general, though, grassy fields uh, don't do a lot of good. You'll see as I spin around here, you'll see a lot of reforestation. Now, I want to talk about how we can get to um, get to a forest from a grassy field. That's really one of the hardest things to do. Uh, to build a forest. Now once you have forests, there's challenges uh, in pruning and etc. There's a lot of things, but um, thinking about pruning, I was just showing you guys this one. This is a, I believe this is some sort of cypress tree. Much taller than me now. And he's playing a little fun game there. One of his branches with the electrical wire. So we'll have to prune a branch of his one of these days. Um, but he is already getting up there. And if we go take a look underneath here, you're going to be able to see that the Brachadia grass is still quite alive underneath. But it is much lower, weaker in the shade. It doesn't grow up. We'll still have to clean it, but less frequently. Um, so trees actually start the forest process by becoming a forest, I guess, if that makes sense by taking away the direct light. Now this brachetia grass, it's just living its life. It's saying, all this sunlight, I gotta keep growing. I gotta cover up this ground. I gotta absorb that sun. Well, multi-layers, look at these like cool seeds. Something going on there. Well, multiple layers of forests are a lot more efficient for absorbing sun and, and warmth as well. Now behind us here we have Another strategy. Now we planted this cypress tree, so we cut the grass and then for a long time we kept it clean around the tree until it could handle itself, which it's at that phase now. Behind us here, this is a little bit of a different strategy. These are wild plants and uh, we've let them grow in certain areas. Now this particular caraspedo, I'm not exactly sure the name. It's kind of a very generic common name. Um, but our horse loved these, so we'd cut those from all around the farm. So wild plant, uh, pi uh, native, uh, pioneer plant, and the horse would eat it. And I suspect it's here because of either something that it didn't eat or something that it ate and pooped. And now these will actually, if I get in here and prune them up a little bit, uh, cut off the lower branches, leave a, a tall stem and kind of a, a high canopy. Um, these should actually grow up to be some pretty nice trees. Now, as we go down here, you guys might remember we sold the horse, which is why the pasture is a little overgrown right now. But we still have some interesting strategies that I think are worth showing, especially um, because we don't have the horse. Now here, we've started to kind of cut in a little bit into the grass. And we're gonna, we're actually gonna get, get ready to do some plaster with that. And so if I come here, I'll be able to show you guys a couple more species that are very useful for us. Oop! Here's this one. This one here is called chilco, and there's a red version too that doesn't grow quite as big. But these chilco trees uh, flower a lot, and they spread their Kind of like a dandelion seed all over through the wind and we like to let them go they're very good for firewood and 
If I show you that is a Chilco tree, that's a Chilco tree right there. Chilco trees. And uh, we'll get a little bit closer. You can see most of those on the border there are Chilcos. We now are getting them inside. And because there's no horse to step on them, it's our job to get in there with the machete and clean around them and not chop them down. That'll give them a good chance to get up and get us some shade. And the grass that'll be here won't go quite as fast, but any animal that we would bring in here would be much happier the shade. Here's another, oh, don't fall over. Here's another plant. Kind of hard to see actually, spindly little. This is actually a broom plant. We, they call it broom plant and they use these long spindles to make a uh, broom. We'll go and prune this up and uh, all of these together would make something like a broom. And uh, they're just some of the useful plants we have here. Got some beans planted over here on the clean side. Now I will be right back. I'm going to go show you guys some of this dry grass we got going on. All right. A little flash forward here to the Marquesina. These are drying racks. And up top we can put coffee. There's none up on my side right now. There's some on the, all the way down the other side. And on the bottom here, more of the shade, we dry this grass. The sun seems to like break it down uh, too fast. Sun's pretty intense down here, uh, high mountain and near the equator. But you see this grass was cut maybe yesterday morning and it's already drying out. And uh, what we'll do is you can see on the other end, those bags are full of this. Once it gets dry, five, five days in the shade here, uh, we'll chop it up. Uh, with a machete against something real fine. We'll chop that grass up nice and fine. We'll mix that with clay, a little bit of water, get the plaster mix going. And uh, we're doing that on the Ecodome. So I'll end this here with a little update on the Ecodome just for people that are going through this one by one. Um, here I can show you guys some other areas here of the farm. Ecodome is a huge project and uh, it has something that's been affecting me for a while. We're working on it now. We're making great progress and soon I suspect I'm going to be comfortable sharing it with you. Um, a lot of failure in there, but uh, we've been doing our best to fail forward, take the lessons that the dome, <laughs> Ecodome has been teaching us. And uh, it looks like we're positioning ourselves to finish uh n now uh, i don't think we're going to finish in august uh, but we may be close and then we'll be doing all the plastering in september i'd really like to include you guys in that part uh but i just want to make really sure uh we're actually going to finish it <laughs> so that's the idea here i'm going to take you guys to here this kind of a a border goes down to the road here what if i could take you guys to here Let's see. If you'd see anything that you'd be interested in. Okay, so these, I would say, are the types of uh, forests we're going for. You know, when you start with a grassy field, it can be really hard to imagine the forest and how to get there. And recently, uh, my grandpa Tramp's farm, I've filmed videos there before, a lot of trees around. He told me when he got there, there were no trees. There's one tree on uh, like the 60 acres or whatever and I remember that tree it was a huge oak tree um, and in fact my aunt found a picture of it it was called a century farm it was a hundred year cow farm when he got it it was it's like a, from a plane or whatever and it was just grass it was all grass and and that really made me think about what we're doing here now in Wisconsin and northern and I suppose really southern climates as well it takes a long time that's a work of his whole life uh 40 plus years working those trees and it's a forest now now we've been here six years and we've got some sections that are surprisingly forested and so uh, it does go faster in the tropics um i'm standing here right behind uh look at this this is a a pioneer species here that we've let live i don't even recognize him i don't even identify the leaf well right next to him here we got our good old friend our toilet paper tree so transforming grassland to forest land now on the Holdrich 
scale, uh, you need a certain amount of rain to get forests. So not everywhere can have forests. Some areas have scrubland, deserts, or the steppe, prairies, savanna, savanna. Uh, different areas do have different, uh, I guess you say, maximum capacities. But in most of the world, that's some type of forest, whether it's a dry or a humid forest, or in our case, a very humid forest. Um, think about, if we're thinking about heat or sun, Think about how many different layers of solar panels are in a forest versus, for example, a little bit of grassland. Now, this is clear here. This is not, uh, well, actually, I do see some sugar cane right there. And there are some cutting grasses here that are probably looking to be eliminated. But we've got some uh, field flowers and we've got some pole beans and... Uh, We've got our biological corridors, and uh, we're going to continue to design multi-layer uh, agroforestry systems, and I hope you'll continue to join us. If there's any questions about creating uh, forests, about perhaps what is possible to create in your zone, um, I'd love to have a conversation with anybody about uh, where you live, your ecosystem, and its possibilities. Um, there's people around the world that are doing things that they call greening the desert, for example. And I think that sort of work is the work that is going to be the most exciting work of this century as we realize that uh, environmental work does not necessarily mean kicking all the humans out, but it means bringing in all of the most creative humans to make really cool designs and to work with nature and uh, build these multi-layer designs. All right, guys, I hope uh, I said something interesting for you. Uh, God bless.